welcome you all to the lecture series on corporate law. The present lecture is devoted to the understanding and analysis of restrictions, otherwise the clauses in transfer of shares agreements and also we try to analyze some of the cases decided by the Supreme Court of India and this particular lecture is a legal analysis of various important clauses and various jurisprudential aspects developed by the adjudicatory bodies and also the judicial jurisprudence developed and also interpreted by the commercial wisdom of the shareholders and also the persons who are involved in the drafting of share agreements or transfer of shares agreements because this is the one of the practical aspects of corporate law where you find lot of development of the subjects and huge number of cases are there and also the litigation which has been developed in the uh, company law practice because why we call as litigation the sense the number of cases which comes before the court of law in the share transfers or the subject on the share capital is about the restrictions as well as the transfer agreements and this subject also we call it as law on right law on transfer of share agreements now let us try to understand why do we discuss this in elaborately the shares the public limited company are freely transferable however the shares the private limited company are restricted the company through articles of associations can keep the restrictions on the transfer of shares agreements. Whereas the public limited companies, the shares are freely transferable and it is very clearly given under the company law that the shares in the public limited companies are freely transferable. Now we will discuss some of the case laws where the jurisprudence has been developed and see how the subject has been evolved. I try to collect, I try to inform to all of you some of the clauses which are very much practiced or which are practiced by the, uh, the drafters of the shareholding agreements that is the holder of the shares, either it may be the uh, transferor and also a transferee. Some of the clauses, right? The clauses which I am referring here are the ROFR stands for right of first refusal, right of first refusal. Other one is right of first offer. So right of first offer and the right of first refusals because these are the very prominently kept are the shareholding agreement. I will put it a simple example. A, Mr. A is transferring share to the B with a condition the B wishes to transfer to the C or to another person the D. The B has to offer first to the A. This is what we call it as right of first offer. Like, let me make myself very clear. Mr. B, who is a transferee, and they put a clause among A and B. In the case of the B wants to transfer either to the C or to the D, B first has to offer to the Mr. A. This is where we call it as B has to offer first to the A. A might be having a right either to accept or either to refuse. So when you find about the refusal and acceptance, 
and this particular clause brings to the whether these clauses clauses are legally binding what is the legal sanctity of the clauses drafted between the two persons not directly connected to the company are not directly in association with the company in the sense b is may not be directly associated because he is purchasing from mr a later b wants to sell it to the c or d so it brings to us understanding of the the clauses which are developed by the business community or the practice of the commercial wisdom of the people and this commercial wisdom of the shareholders has become in the part and parcel of the law now in this scenario we will try to deal or we will try to discuss some of the cases which came before the supreme court of india over a point of time the honorable supreme court has laid down certain principles certain law with regard to the clauses in the shareholding agreement one among those cases are ms madhusudan and another versus kerala comedy private limited a case of 2003 it was a company or the case related to the or uh, transfer of the shares among the family members i have put it for your understanding the head notes of the case in law we always read the head notes like important uh, highlights of the case let us see what it says in high head notes though it talks about various provisions of company law starting from section 31 sub clause 1 108 159 161 etc now we are concerned in this case section 108 of companies act 1956 which has the relevance of section 58 of companies act 2013 in the simple call how the agreements drafted with regard to the transfer of the shares now let us see what happened in this case dispute between the members of the family relating to controlling interest in companies documentary evidence relating to transfer shows that there was a valid transfer of the shares recorded in the minutes of the meeting change in the mode of transfer was also put before the board in the annual return of the company the list of past and present members are given and against the name of the transferor it was mentioned that they had affected transfer of the shareholding through transfer owners to dispute the transfer is upon the person who claims that the transfer has not affected appellant working as a managing director through amended articles of association resolved approved by the extraordinary general meetings this makes you something what are the legal terminology to make this in a simple understanding and to make you very very uh, outcome of the case that the judgment is almost all uh, 30 pages so we don't require to 30 pages to read now see what happened the case arises out of the complex family dispute in kerala especially out of the karar that is agreement right a karar means agreement provided in class 2 there would be no more change in the existing share structures among the family of a private company class 2 also provided that the shares of two members would pass to madhusudan in a certain percentage on their death so they put a clause at any point of time if they want to transfer it will pass for the one of the family members now the supreme court held in this case right we are coming into the the legal aspects of the transfer of the shares it was a family dispute a group of family members were there 
some of the family members were not existent at the time when the case was filed. Among various other disputes, one of the dispute was transfer of the shares, whether the clauses on the transfer of the shares, what clauses can be kept. Now the Supreme Court has held in this case, it is a settled law that the shares are movable properties and transferable. In private companies, the articles of association restricts the shareholders right to transfer of the shares and prohibit any invitation to the public to subscribe for any shares in or debentures of the company. This is how a private company is defined subject to the restrictions of the holder of the shares of a private limited company may agree to sell the shares to a person of his choice. Such agreements are enforceable, right? Such agreement are specially enforceable under section 10 of the specific relief act. Now, the jurisprudence of MS Madhusudan case is that the private limited companies, the restrictions of the transfers are permitted because private limited company precisely stands on a principle of restriction of the shares. So therefore they held the clauses are valid and the clauses can be enforceable under section 10 of the specific relief act. The another line which they try to explain that the clauses in the share transfer agreement shall not be contrary to the articles of associations, right? Unless otherwise the contrary proves in the articles of associations that drafting agreement in the private limited companies where the restrictions are permitted these documents becomes valid, these documents becomes enforceable. So the Supreme Court held in MS Madhusudans versus Kerala Kaumudi Private Limited Company that these agreements are enforceable under section 10 of the Specific Relief Act 1963. The other aspects of the same case relating to the winding up and other disputes I am not considering. Because M.S. Madhusudan's case, he talks about various other aspects, about the removal of the directors, appointment of managing directors, and so on, other issues are there. We are not concerning to the other issues of the corporate law. We are basically concerned the primary aspects of clauses in the transfer of agreements and the clauses becomes valid. The other important issue in the same case, valuation of the shares, where the Supreme Court said, fair value of the shares which shall remain the valid. So fair valuation of the shares also being held as enforceable. So this is briefly MS Madhusudan's case. Now, in the furtherance of the same case, they also held in the paragraph 162 of the case, they said that, this was affected as far as KIPL was concerned on 4th March 1985. It was held that the evidence showed clearly that all necessary steps had been taken to effect the shares transfers and that it was immaterial that the petitioner were not parties to exhibit P190 because the share transfer deeds had been signed and signatories were bound by that, particularly when they had not established they had signed. The share transfer documents under, mis any, under any misrepresentation, fraud or undue influence are a mistake. The case also talks one of the important concepts called blank transfers because they sign and give a document where the parties names were not written and the clauses were there. That comes to an advanced level of reading of the case. But to understand the basic fundamental levels, 
you can understand that the private limited company the clauses can be there now coming back to the another landmark case the second landmark case vb rangaraj versus vb gopala krishnans and others in this case section 82 of the 1956 act article 13 of the articles of association was questioned whether shareholders among themselves can enter into an agreement contrary to articles of association of the company the act provides that aoa or regulations of the company binding on company and its shareholders shares are a movable property and their transfer is regulated by aoa of a company agreement imposing restrictions contrary to the provisions of articles would not be binding on shareholder and the company this case is also related to the private limited company in this private limited company if their clauses are contrary to the aoa so if there is a clause drafted among the shareholders which is contrary to the provisions of aoa that agreement becomes void otherwise called not enforceable so this is the jurisprudential aspects which was laid down in the vb rangarajan's case in the 1992 this is a case related to the private limited companies right ms madhusudan's case as well as the vb rangarajan's case talks about the private limited company shares and the restrictions on the uh, transfer of the private limited companies now i just want to explain the facts of the case from the judgments there are two appeals filed in this case the main question falls for the consideration of the both appeals is that whether the shareholders can among themselves enter into agreement contrary to or inconsistent with the aoa of the company right very briefly the facts of the case in 1.5 lines the main question falls in this case is that right whether the shareholders can among themselves enter into an agreement which is contrary to or inconsistent with the aoa of a companies the third defendant is a private limited company which along had a total shareholding of 50 before the joint family of the plaintiffs and the defendants came this you don't require to read just i put it for understanding here what happened in this case was the two groups of the family always want to remain their shareholding 50 is to 50 if at all they want to transfer a third party they should offer to a first one so they put about the clauses in the agreements i will repeat again here they says if the family members either of the branches wish to sell his shares he would give the first option of purchase to the members of that branch and only if offer so made was not accepted the shares would be sold to others although on behalf of the defendants it was disputed that there was any such agreement entered into between the two brothers the finding recorded by the courts below is against to the defendants to put it very simple the restrictions are permitted under the private limited companies but restrictions should not be contrary to the articles of associations of companies kindly remember the vb rangarajan case brings with the concept the clauses are permitted but clauses should not be contrary to the aoa of the companies and they also referred some of the cases in the same judgment one of the foreign case 
which they quoted from the All England Law Report. Indri Swelladeli Cleaners Limited, 1968. It was held that it is well established that a share in a company is an item of property freely alienable in the absence of express restrictions under the articles. This was reiterated in Tet versus Phonex Property and Investment Companies Limited, 1986 to Supreme Court, 1999. Now I will read again. It was well established that the share in a company is an item of the property freely alienable in the absence of, right, in the absence of express restrictions under the articles. This was reiterated in Tet versus Phonex Property Limited, Tet versus Phonex Property and Investment Company Limited and others, 1986 to Supreme Court SCC 99. So therefore, two documents governs on the transfer of shares. One is about express restrictions under the Articles of Association and other one is the wisdom of the commercial man, the wisdom of the business communities. There is also another author in his book he has referred Chapter 16 of the Gore Brown on Companies Act, 43rd editions, where the author refers on transfer of shares. According to the Gore Brownie, while dealing with the transfer of shares, it is stated that subject to certain limited restrictions imposed by law, a shareholder has, pri <coughs> has prima facie the right to transfer his shares when and to whom he pleases. This freedom to transfer may however significantly curtailed by the provisions of law. Right? I will repeat again. A shareholder has a prima facie right to transfer his shares when and to whom he pleases. This freedom of to transfer may however be significantly curtailed by provisions the articles. In determining the extent of any restrictions on transfer contained in the articles, a strict construction is adopted. The restrictions must be set out expressly or must arise by necessary implications and any ambiguous provision is construed in favor of the shareholding wishing to transfer. So again the bottom line comes about the express provisions in the AOA and the freedom of right given to the shareholders where the shareholder has a right to transfer. The Palmer's in his book on company law, he also refers on transfer of the shares where it says it is well settled that unless the articles otherwise provide the shareholder has a free right to transfer to whom he will. It is not necessary to seek the articles for a power to transfer as far as the English Act. Itself gives a such power. It is only necessary to look into the articles to ascertain the restrictions if any upon it. Thus a member has a right to transfer his or her shares to another person unless this right is clearly taken by the articles. If you see the, the case of 1968, 1986, then also the statements of the Gore Brownie and the Palmer's company law we can understand it is inherent right of the shareholder, right? It is inherent right of the shareholder to transfer the shares unless 
expressly this right has been taken out unless express this right has been taken out by AOA or unless the restrictions are given under the AOA. So therefore, we see the judgment of E.B. Rangarajans and it says and also they talk about the validity of an agreement. They also says the agreement becomes invalid because it is contrary to the articles. V.B. Rangarajan judgment says restrictions are permitted but not contrary to the articles of association. If it is contrary to articles of association, then AOA prevails over the restrictive classes. This is the private limited company restrictions. In the same case only, these references are made. So I am putting these references to make you to understand about the subject. Now let me go back to the another very very landmark case. A case which has created lot of jurisprudential aspects, lot of discussion has happened on the transfer of the shares. The name of the case is Vodafone International Holdings versus Union of India 2012 Supreme Court judgment. This case is basically known for tax matters. There is no doubt this case is basically comes under tax law. But the dispute of the tax arises out of transfer of the shares, acquisition of the shares. Let us see the brief facts of the case in a small paragraph. This matter concerns a tax dispute involving the Vodafone group with Indian tax authorities in relation to acquisition by Vodafone International Holdings BV a company resident for tax purposes in Netherlands, the entire share capital of CGP Investments Holdings for short CGP, a company resident for tax purposes in Cayman Islands, CI, white transaction dated in 11-2-2007, whose stated aim according to the revenue, acquisition of 67% of controlling interest, in HCL being a company resident in tax purposes in India. Now we are able to see three companies, one in the Netherlands, Cayman Islands and India. There is an acquisition and transfer of the shares which attracts securities transaction tax and payment of the taxes. The companies are incorporated in various jurisdictions for tax avoidance or tax uh, other uh, tax benefits. Now this case lays down in some of the paragraphs law, the law on shareholders agreement the clauses on shareholding agreements. Now I am taking some of the paragraphs where the Supreme Court of India has laid down the jurisprudential aspects on the or the clauses in the share transfer agreement. If anybody gets a time, they can read the judgments. Some of the paragraphs of these particular judgments are very very important to understand the law and practice of the clauses in share transfer agreement. Now I am taking paragraph number 154 of the Vodafone judgment, right? Paragraph number 154 of the Vodafone judgments I am discussing. Now when you see this paragraph, it says shareholding agreement in short SHA is a contract between some or all other shareholders in a company. The purpose for which is to confer rights and impose obligation over and above those provided by company law. SHA, that is shareholders agreement, is a private contract between the shareholders 
compared to the AOA of a company which is a public document. So two principles are coming. AOA is a public document and SHA is the private document. So you have the private document and the public document. Being a private document, it binds the parties thereof and not the others remaining advantage of. SHA that gives a greater flexibility unlike AOA. It also makes the provisions for resolution of any dispute between the shareholders and also how future capital contributions have to be made. Provisions of HHA may also go contrary to the provisions of AOA. In that event, naturally AOA will govern and not the SHA. So this is again a repetition which we discuss, but the law is very clear. They are all telling if the contrary is there. Now there is another point which comes. If SHA is a document, is a private document, if the AOA is silent, what will happen? Right? When we are talking, if there is an express provision in AOA, and if the private agreement is contrary, then the problem comes. If AOA is not contrary, then what will happen? If AOA is silent, then what is going to happen? These are all comes into the very, very important uh, aspects of transfer agreement, clauses in transfer agreement. Now, this is which I want to discuss and explain to all of you the various clauses, right? The various clauses drafted between two parties, that is the third parties which in the private agreements and they can keep very various clauses. The names of the clauses are given under the paragraph number 157 of the Vodafone judgment. The first clause ROFR, ROFO, drag along rights, tag along rights, preemptive rights, call option, put option, subscription option. It further explains SHA in a characteristic joint ventures enterprise may regulate its affairs on the basis of various provisions enumerated above. Because joint venture enterprise may deal with matters regulating the ownership and voting rights of the shares in a company control and manage the affairs of the company and also make the provisions for resolution of disputes between the shareholders. Many of the above mentioned provisions find a place in HHA, FWA, term sheet agreement, right? So we have referred some of the clauses. I will repeat again, legal terminology on the clauses in agreement. First refusal, first offer, drag along rights, tag along rights, preemptive clauses, call option, put option, subscription options. Some of you may have, why should we read these clauses? These clauses will decide in the joint venture agreement, regulation of ownership, voting rights, control and managing the affairs of the company. So there's a lot of changes what happens in the management of companies. Let us discuss what happens in these clauses in a brief as for Supreme Court judgments. ROFR means ROFR permits its holder to claim the transfer of the subject of the right with a unilateral declaration of intent which can either be contractual or legal. No statutory recognition has begun has been given to that right either in Indian company law or 
income tax laws. Very important concept, though legal recognition is not given. Some foreign jurisdictions have made provisions regulating those rights by statutes. Generally, ROIFR is a contractual and determined in an agreement. ROIFR clauses have contractual restrictions that give the holders the option to enter into a commercial transaction with the owner on the basis of some specific terms before the owner may enter into the transactions with a third party. Shareholders right to transfer the share is not totally prevented, yet a shareholder is obliged to offer the shares first to the existing shareholder. Consequently, the other shareholders will have the privilege over the third parties with regard to the purchase of the shares. So ROFR gives a in, in right offering to the existing members, offering to the existing party. So in the case when the existing member refuses, then you can give it to the other members. Though it is no, there is no statutory recognition under Indian law, but the customary practices of the business people are commercial transaction that becomes a valid even when these restrictions are being uh, implemented, when these restrictions are included in the agreements drafted among the uh, uh, what's called the holder of the shares. Second one, drag along rights is a facet of ROIFR, often referred to the power of a minority shareholder to sell their shares to the prospective buyer at the same price as other shareholder will propose to sell. So what it provides, it is giving a right to the minority shareholders in the case of large number of acquisitions. So minority shareholders will also be protected by the clause which is interpreted by the clause which is drafted as a tag along rights. In other words, in other words, if one shareholder wants to sell, he can do so only if the purchaser agrees to purchase the other shareholders who wish to sell the shares at the same price. TAR often finds a place in SHA which protect the interest of minority shareholders. So you are also having a clause to protect the interest of minority shareholders. So basically on the transfer of the shares. Sometimes what will happen, the majority shareholders may fix some price which may deprive the rights of the minority shareholder. So this clause provides the right to the minority shareholders. Then you have another clause, subscription clause. It gives the beneficiary a right to demand issuance of allotment of shares of the target company. It is for that reason that a subscription right is normally accompanied by ancillary provisions, including exit clause, where if the dilution crosses a particular level, the counterparty is given some kind of exit, exit option. Basically, this comes into the takeovers and acquisitions. At this point of stage, you don't require to a lot of understanding, you don't require to a lot of explanation for this. So I'm not uh, going in detail on the subscription class. Try to understand a right of first refusal, drag along rights, subscription clause, call options. It is a call options arrangement often seen in merger and acquisition projects. When they aim at the foreign investment, a call option is given to a foreign buyer by agreement so that the foreign buyer is able to enjoy the permitted minimum equity interest of the target company. Call option is always granted as a right, not an obligation, 
which can be exercised upon satisfaction of certain conditions and or within a certain period agreed by the guarantor and guarantee. Put option also <coughs> is one of the mode of an option. A put option represents the right but not the requirement to sell. These are all some of the clauses like for example ROFR, TAR, subscription clauses, call options, put option and cash and cashless options. What is the takeaway from these options? Under 158 of paragraph of Vodafone judgment, it says SHA therefore regulate the ownership and voting rights of the shares in a company. Kindly remember the very very important point. Shareholding agreement, share purchase agreement will decide about the ownership agreement or ownership of company by virtue of various clauses in the transfer agreements. So in the transfer agreements of the shares, they keep various clauses. These clauses are legally enforceable unless otherwise expressly contrary to the articles of associations. Therefore, adjudicatory bodies, judicial institutions have recognized these rights and these rights are enforceable in the court of law. So therefore ownership of a company is very important. The ownership of company can be changed by virtue of clauses in the shareholding agreement. Now the another case is Bajaj Auto Limited versus Western Maharashtra Development Corporation. This is a judgment of 2015 and here there is an issue with regard to the Articles of Association as well as with regard to the Section 58 of the Companies Act which talks about the transfer of shares, right? Section 58 of the Companies Act 2013 talks about the transfer of and transmission of the securities. So here they referred that the legal position under Section 56 clarifies a preemptive agreements, if any disputes are there on the clauses and the clauses can be enforceable through arbitration agreement, the law laid down in this case is that shareholding agreements in short is a contract, it is a private contract compared to the AOA which is a public document being a private document, it binds thereof and not the remaining shareholders of the companies. So this is a law today when we look about the uh, law of the transfer of the shares. Shareholding agreement is a private contract between the articles between the shareholders compared to the articles of association of the company which is the public document. Now let us recollect what we have discussed for another for a period of 30 to 40 minutes. I started my discussion to understand or to make you the clauses on transfer of the shares. Initially we discussed the clauses ROFR, ROFO private agreements and other developments. We also discussed two cases relating to the private limited MS Madhusudan versus Kerala Comedy, then VB Rangarajans versus VB Gopalakrishnan where it says restrictions are permitted but it should not contrary to AOA. When it comes to the the case of VB 
uh, what call the the case of the Vodafone judgment 2012 which talks about the public limited company because the public limited company the shares are freely transferable even when the shares are freely transferable the jurisprudence has developed in such a way the clauses drafted by the business people or the company or the shareholders is valid is also becomes enforceable in law that's what they talked about various clauses because the ownership structures are being changes so therefore the rofr tar dar preemptive rights call options put options and so on because there is a lot of jurisprudence has been developed on the clauses of the shareholding agreement so i will pause it here i will try to take some more classes with regard to the some other case laws on the new points of the clauses in the shareholding agreements i request to all of you kindly listen understand if any doubts are there put it in the chat box i will try to clarify your doubts so thank you for patient listening we will see in the next class thank you take care bye